Hey, welcome back everyone. It is time for another Red Hot Covered Call video. Hey look, before we get going, I wanna say thank you for visiting my channel, subscribing to my channel, liking my videos, and commenting below. Absolutely love that you are engaged, you wanna learn, and I think you're motivated. See, that's why this channel exists. It's to help you up your game. I tell the story all the time that my mentor Jerry mentored me to success with the Covered Call strategy. And that's what I wanna do here. One thing you're not gonna hear in this video is me asking you for a nickel. I do this to pay it forward. If you've been with my channel, you know that's the purpose of this channel. I look to create videos to up your game, and I'll tell you what, at the end of the day, the success stories you give me motivates me, jacks me up. Quite frankly, makes me feel proud that you're learning and you're having the success that I am. What I'm really looking to do with these videos is get you comfortable, get you motivated, so you do it. Because I know that's one of the biggest hurdles to having the success, actually doing it. Now look, before we get going, because I have a great video today where we're going to talk about two trades. Two trades where I made over $400, but it didn't come without some drama. I'm going to show you those trades today, and I think you're going to learn some. Now look, if you haven't been to my website, cpdashboard.com, that's where I have all the free spreadsheets to keep the numbers in front of you for all your covered call trades. And I have the CTP dashboard, which I upload every Wednesday, so we can find that covered call candidate for our next great covered call trade. I upload it for free, and I offer it up to you for free. So if if you haven't been there, go to CTP dashboard and download your free copy. And look, if you're new to my channel, the one thing you're going to notice is I always post up how much money I'm making with this cover call strategy. The reason for that is simple. Three years ago, I set a very simple goal. Once my mentor Jerry set me straight, I wanted to be motivated, right? I wanted to set goals because I'm a goal driven person. So I told Jerry, look, I want to make $1,200 a month as if I were in retirement, right? I'm in retirement. I have some money. I want to generate extra income. Well, that's why I always show you my numbers. I want to motivate and inspire you that you can make real money doing this. I want to show you my trades. We talk about them so maybe you learn something because I'm one of those cats that believes if you show it to me, it's going to sink in a little deeper, right? It's going to seem more comfortable when I see somebody else doing it. That's why I do this. That's why I show you my trades. We talk about them so you learn something, so you get comfortable and you might actually do it. Now look, if you notice, I have added to my totals. And right now for the first three months of 2019, I'm averaging $5,500 a month. So this could actually be a year that I exceed my goal of $55,000. Remember last year I set a goal for 50,000? Absolutely blew my mind that I was able to achieve that goal. Now look, before we get to those two trades that I'm gonna show you, if you like what you're hearing today, I want you to subscribe to the channel. It's right there and it's free. And look, if you like this video today, I want you to bang that like button. It lets me know you like what I'm doing. And look, what we're doing is this. Every single week, I bring you timely and relevant covered call trades, cash secure put trades. We haven't talked cash secure puts in a while. I used volatility yesterday for a Nike trade, pocketing over $250 on a quick one week cash secure put. We're not going to talk about that trade here. We'll talk about it next week. Today is about covered calls because over the past 21 days, I've had two trades knocking down $400. I'm going to show you those trades right now. Now, before we get to those trades, let me show you where I'm at on the year right now. Cash on cash, I'm knocking down 7.4%. Now, the market's up 12.7%. If you remember last year, my $55,000 on my $250,000 that I use for this strategy pocketed me 24 plus percent. The market was down some 12% last year. Now, I absolutely love this strategy because I'm able to generate month over month cash on cash percentage profits that beat the market. If you remember my first year, I made about 16%. Then the next year I made 18%. And the following year, last year, I made 24.7%. This year, I'm already at 7.4%. See, that's what I love about the strategy. As the market goes up and down, ebbs and flows, as I'm writing covered calls and selling cash secure puts, I'm actually putting on those trades using a short window of weekly and monthly trades. I'm able to close those trades, generate that cash on cash profit. And I'm telling you, beating the market always feels better than being left holding the bag on a swing trade. Hey, I speak from experience and that's why I'm a huge advocate for the cover call strategy. With these two trades that I'm going to talk about now, I have just crossed the 130,000 mark for over three years. Yeah, that's right. Over $130,000 in profits, knocking it down. That's why I call this my cash printing machine. 
Look, let's go ahead and get to those trades because I know you'll want to hear about my Microsoft trade. But let's get to Chevron first because that one didn't come without a little bit of drama. Okay, so let me give you a little backstory on Chevron. Of course, if you've been with my channel, you know I love trading Chevron. I've been trading it for years. Well, my most recent trade on Chevron was back here when Chevron had dipped way below its trading range. I think it missed earnings back then. Well, that's when I started accumulating some Chevron shares. And I have about 400 shares. My cost basis on Chevron was about 116. But see, I would write covered calls into that momentum and as it would fall, I would buy those options back. Now, for some of you, you may not understand the buy buying back of the option side. But just understand, when you write a covered call for uh, say a dollar, say you get a dollar per share for giving somebody the right to take your shares from you at a price you set, that $1 option price sticks with the stock. And what I mean by that is, if the stock is trading for $120, if you write a covered call with a strike of 123 and you get paid $1, as soon as you put on that trade, as the stock goes up and down, so does the option price. They call that the delta. As a stock's price moves up or down one dollar its delta will move in sync so for me what I always like to do is as I put on those trades and the stock falls I'll buy back those options pocket the difference we look to write another covered call if anything you're gonna learn from my channel you're gonna see very basic trades and what I try to share with you is all the things that I do after the trade like buy them back and roll them and hell maybe even have a covered call and write a cash secure put so for me I really want to show you all of the possibilities so you can really start to feel comfortable with. So getting back to the trade, as Chevron is moving up and down, I'm writing those covered calls and buying them back or they expire worthless, right? They didn't get to the strike price. They dipped off. I let it expire worthless. Well, as you can see, since I've held it, I've been able to pick up two dividends, which they pay a buck 12. So it's a juicy dividend. I've been able to write covered calls, buy them back. And now with a cost basis much lower than 116, I'm at a point right now where if I write that covered call and I have my shares taken away, that's totally fine with me because for me, I think Chevron's getting to a point where it's at the top of its range. I've held Chevron for years and it's all time highs around 130. So as we get into the 120s and the 126s like it was last week, you know, I'm really feeling like it's at the top of the range and it might peel back. Well, I'm going to play that short term momentum. Hopefully my shares will be taken away at a higher price. I get the money. We move on. Well, this is what happened. So the setup is simple. Chevron was trading over 120. And I'm thinking 21 days ago, I'm going to let somebody take my shares away from me at 123. They're going to pay me a dollar five cents for that 21 day trade. So that's the setup on this trade. It's a 2.5% gain if my shares are taken away. And because my cost basis on Chevron is much lower, I make even more money on this trade. This is a great trade. I know a lot of you are saying, well, why would you want to give up on Chevron here? Just remember what I told you. I've been playing and watching Chevron for years. And for me, it's getting near its all time high. I actually think this momentum is a great opportunity to sell a covered call into it and maybe have your shares taken away higher. For me, I think Chevron's all time high around 130 is in the sandbox of where Chevron plays. And it wouldn't surprise me if it gets near 130 and drifts back to 110. But we'll see. And if it does, you know I'll be back in it because I love that great range trade, right? We always talk about that where we look to use the Keltner channel. We want to get a low risk entry. I love to buy my stocks at the bottom band of the Keltner channel and hope that it goes higher. As you can see, Chevron is trading above 123 into expiration. I know my shares are going to be taken away. Mentally, my mindset is those shares are gone. So I'm not fretting it. I'm going to get the money deposited into my account and we are going to look to move on. Find another stock. In fact, I have a list of stocks I'm looking to buy. Well, as we get into Friday and it's right here, you could see the market decides to tank some 450 points and so does Chevron. As Chevron's starting to fall down to 123, now all of a sudden I'm thinking to myself, man, maybe I can buy this option back and I can write the next covered call. Cause I think this short term fall in the Dow will probably rebound next week. For me, nothing's changed with the markets. I still think it's going to go higher, but man, I'm thinking, wow, this is a great opportunity. So when Chevron was trading at 123.21, I put in a bid to buy it, buy the option back at 22 cents, right? Because as we're getting to expiration, it's hours before expiration 
that premium I got paid $1.05 for, there's no time value in it. We're literally hours away from expiration. So if you remember, an option is made up of two things, real money, time value. So if there's no time value, then the option price is gonna be real money. And in this case, because my strike price is 123, the stock's trading for 123.21. Well, that option price I got paid $1.05 is now trading for near real money. Well, in this case, it was trading for 40 cents. So the the option I got paid a buck 05 is now trading for 40 cents. I don't want to give up 40 cents of my buck 05 at this point. But if I think the stock is going to trade around this price for the rest of the day, what's going to happen here is this 40 cents is going to start to dwindle away. And at the end of the day, it's probably going to be about one penny over real value. So at the end of the trading day, this option will probably be trading for real money plus about one penny of time value. So what did I do before I went to lunch? I went ahead and put in a limit order to buy my option back that I got paid $1.05 for 22 cents. Now, I went to lunch and totally forgot, totally forgot I put on that trade. So when I came back and Chevron ends up trading at 123.09, I'm sitting there thinking, damn, for nine cents, I could have bought back the option. My shares are gonna be taken away at 123. Not a problem, we move on. I log into my account and find that I bought the option back for 22 cents. And yeah, I paid a fee for that and I paid 22 cents. So I ended up making 80 cents on the trade because I got paid the 105, I paid back the 22 cents. So for me, it's a great crumb trade. We still own the shares and I'm gonna go ahead and write a cover call next week for another 30 days. And I think there'll be a dividend X date during that time. So I'll be looking to double dip the prof. Hey, look, let's go ahead and talk about that Microsoft trade. That was a one day trade that I think you're gonna like. Now, if you're wondering what Delta is, there's a lot of great cover call videos about how they use Delta in their trades. I'm gonna be talking about that more and more. Personally, I don't use Delta for my trades, but we're gonna talk about it. Get a lot of questions in my inbox about it. If you wanna learn more about Delta and how it applies to options, definitely go to Google, YouTube, what is Delta? Now, let's go ahead and get to that quick Microsoft trade. This was a one day trade where I tried to pocket a little tiny crumb, and if my shares were taken away, totally fine with me. My cost basis on Microsoft is about 104, and and again, it goes back to similar to that Chevron trade. I feel like Microsoft's at an all time high. And if we get a pullback in the market, you know, we might get Microsoft falling back to that 110 number. I'd love to buy some shares. But here's the deal. Having somebody buy my shares from me at 119 with a cost basis of 104, man, that's a serious cover call crumb that I was looking to take advantage of. And as you can see on Friday, this is a five day chart. As the stock is heading higher, I'm thinking to myself, this would be a great opportunity to write that covered call 119. I got about 35 cents for that trade. Now, I know that doesn't sound like much. For me, it was about a $100 crumb. And look, for me to get $119 for my shares, I'll let somebody else take the risk of Microsoft at 119, where I think it's trading at the top of its all-time range. And look, if it peels off, I'll look to buy Microsoft later and get back to writing calls with. Well, that's exactly what I did. I wrote that covered call, a one-day covered call, looking to have my shares taken away at 119. And look what happened. We get that sell-off that I talked about. Man, I thought my shares were taken away at 119. Not at all. Come Friday morning, the market's down and Microsoft's down two bucks and now it's trading under 119. Well, early in the trading day, I almost got suckered and buy the option back higher. Meaning, I got paid 35 cents for this option, but Microsoft was sort of dancing. And I felt like, man, with the market getting crushed and Microsoft holding steady, huh, I might be missing a run from 119 to 120. So when it was trading right here at about 119.50, I actually thought about buying this option back higher. Well, I didn't. And as you could see, the market started to decay all day long. Microsoft finished the day well under 119. I end up keeping my shares. I keep the 35 cents. And I don't know if I'm happy about this, but at this point, I pick up that little $100 crumb. We're going to look to do this next week. See if the markets catch a bid, maybe head green, and we can try to get 119 or 120 from my Microsoft shares. But at this point, I'm going to look to write these weekly covered calls on Microsoft, just picking up these little crumbs. And if I could have my shares taken away higher, I'm going to take that green trade and we'll look to do it again. And what I'm hoping, do it time and time again. Now, look, I know I didn't spend much time on that Microsoft trade. It was really that quick. It was a one day trade. And really, I was just looking to play the momentum, have my shares taken away at 119. Uh, quite frankly, it backfired on me because now I own a stock that's trading three bucks lower. And man, I better have a plan. 
Well, I do have a plan, and that's what I tell you all the time. We need to get our financial education, we need to get our experience, because we have to make good decisions, and a good decision is having a plan for the stocks you own. Look, what I want you to do is I want you to bang that like button if you like this video today. I want you to share this video. We need to let others know what we're doing here so they can get in the game. I'm getting a lot of comments where a lot of you folks are getting in the game, opening up your first small ball account, you're getting interested, you're watching the videos, and that pumps me up to do the next red hot cover call video. And what we have coming up, I still owe you that using margin with the cover call strategy. Hopefully we're gonna do that video next week. It is exciting, it is something Jerry and I have been talking about and I know you'll be interested. Hey look, until next time, I hope all your cover calls are profitable.